Hi everyone, my name is Hong Do-gyu from UC Irvine. I represent a team of 56 climate scientists and machine learning experts who deeply care about ongoing climate crisis. Today I want to share one challenge, one challenge problem that our climate science community has been struggling with for the past many years. Uh, we figured to make um, our work to the next level, we need some help from the machine learning community. That's why I'm speaking to you here today. What we want to do is basically one day regression problem to emulate really complicated uh, physical system inside climate models. One day regression may sound simple, but I will show you why this is difficult and important problem to solve. Before we're jumping into main slide, I want to mention one more thing about um, AI weather prediction models, because I believe many of you might have heard about um, AI weather prediction making amazing progresses this year. Yes, weather and climate are closely related, but in my opinion, climate is a tougher problem because climate models should be able to um, generalize too many what-if scenarios of unseen climate, which is out of distribution. So compared to AI weather prediction models based on autoregressive image translations, we, Climsim scientists, believe hybrid climate modeling based on locally constrained physical emulation is more likely to be generalizable. Uh, we might be wrong, so I want to hear more about your opinion later. And another benefit of um, hybrid model is that it provides seamless integration to the existing climate model ecosystem. What that means is once we come up with good hybrid climate model, we can use it right away for operational uses. Uh, here we go. Uh, we have already started uh, feeling the consequences of ongoing climate change. Uh, this, is, uh, this year alone, we have witnessed disturbing escalation of extreme weather events. And recently, WMO, World Meteorological Organization, announced that this year, 2023, is going to be the warmest year ever recorded. These are not just news headlines, these are urgent calls for action. So as climate scientists, we work hard to provide accurate climate models. But unfortunately, the current general climate models yield too large uncertainties to be practically useful. So we need to improve climate models. How can you do it? The First, straightforward solution is increasing model resolutions up to kilometers or even sub-kilometer scale. This is important because at this critical resolution, new physics emerges. For, for example, the formation of extreme storm systems. Yet, even with today's best computer, running such models for multi-decadal or centennial simulations is practically impossible. The Moore's law says the situation, the situation will not change for the next two to three decades. So we need like, something else. A ultimate approach, alternative approach, uh, which is computationally feasible, is hybrid climate model with machine learning emulators. In a hybrid model, a machine learning emulator replaces a specific part of a GCM global climate model calculations from which we know large errors originated. Then the question becomes, what process, what calculation we are going to replace. The obvious target is cloud processes because it's, it's really well known that um, the cloud calculation in the current climate model is the number one source of model errors. To begin with, cloud uh, entails really complicated set of physics, including turbulence, convection, radiation, phase change of water, and the system itself is stochastic. But numerically speaking, um, it, is, um, it is like large source error because it's sub-resolution process. What that means is um, do this um, cloud process should be approximated based on macro scale variables using many assumptions. So they are intrinsically um, error prone. So we target to replace this current climate calculation with machine learning emulator. This is hardly a new problem. Our climate modeling community has been trying this for the past seven years. 
the real challenge comes when we plug or couple uh, motion learning emulator inside the client model. Most times, if, if not every time, it blows up. So over time, this very issue has become the ex existential problem in the climate modeling community. So we need a fresh perspective from you guys to make a breakthrough. We want you machine learners to swarm into this problem and try algorithms that climate scientists have never thought about before. Uh, that's why we created ClimSim, to make it as easy as possible for you to come in and try out uh, this problem. Um, through through um, collaboration of 20 institutions, we created um, this giant data set, ClimSim. It contains 6 billion samples, 3 data set hierarchy, 6 baseline models, problem-specific metric, complete documentation, and downstream task strategies. I will highlight some of this in, in upcoming slides, but for now, I will explain how we created the data set. We use E3SM MMF. MMF stands for Multi-Scale Modeling Framework. Simply put, MMF is basically a modeling technique to embed a model inside another model. So in our case, outer model is global climate model, but inner model is a high fidelity model to explicitly calculate cloud processes. So ClimSim document the, the data stream between these two set of models. ClimSim provides data set in three flavors. The main data set is high resolution real ge geography version. It alone contains 5.7 billion samples and its data volume is 41.2 terabyte. And at the same time, we provide like um, low resolution counterpart, which is simpler data set and lightweight for fast model prototyping. In a climate model, the atmosphere is disc discretized in 3D mesh. One important thing I want you to remember is that uh, we take each the vertical column as an independent sample. And each sample includes uh, many atmospheric variables. For example, in input, there are some variables that has vertical dimension, something like temperature, humidity, or there are also scalar variables, some variables only defined at the top of atmosphere or at the surface. Using these input variables, we want to predict updated atmospheric state. So you can directly predict the state itself or equally um, the valid approach is you can predict the tendency of these state variables. And this illustration only includes a um, very small subset of the full, uh, full ClimSim variable. And if you include every variables that we provide, um, the, the length of the concatenated input and output vectors will be 617 and 368, respectively. Now I will uh, walk you through some key results from baseline experiment. The first, I want to note that we only use like subset of the full variables in order to make our experiment um, similar to the previous attempt documented in the literature. So you are looking at a globally averaged R squared here. The first observation, some output variables are much harder to predict than the rest, implying um, uh, where to channel our future effort. Um, and second observation, if you look at it, each individual output variables, you will not see too much differences out of six baseline models. This is, this is an artifact of this globally averaged metric being insufficient in our domain. So I will show you um, the more complicated error structure in the following slide. So I'm taking the first, first variable, dt dt, which is temperature tendency, and I'm expanding to the vertical dimension. Um, compared to the global average, this chart delivers more delicate messages. Model performance are not uniform, but depend on the vertical position. And equally inter interesting is that even model ranks are not robust throughout the vertical dimension. The model error structure is already complicated, but it's not over yet. 
In the next slide, I am expanding one specific level into horizontal dimension. In the global map, you can see that um, the model performance varies not just vertically, but also horizontally. Note that this plot shows a spatial map at only one level. So if you plot another level, you may see different spatial patterns. So the error structure is quite complicated. The spatial heterogeneity of model performance is ultimately related to the fact that Cloud processes involve different combination of physics from one region to another region. This reflects why this seemingly simple 1D regression task is challenging to obtain one good emulator that works well, no matter where. Uh, I will skip this slide. And I hope now you agree with me that this 1D regression is a challenging and important problem. And the 1D regression problem is the main target of CLIMSIM, but don't feel constricted. Uh, CLIMSIM can be used for non-local regression or image translations, too, if you want to. If you come up with a um, good emulator that is stable and accurate inside a climbing model, the impact will be transformative. First, we can sidestep more slow way ahead of its schedule, delivering physically cre credible climate models. And these models will be used for guiding climate-related policies, and also will be used for science to answer new questions that were not possible previously due to model deficiency. 56 scientists from top climate institutions work really hard to produce this data set. So we are all waiting with bated breath to see what you guys climate you no know, machine learning community are uh, doing with this data set. So I invite you everyone here, let's solve this problem together. Um, we can make the world more climate resilient, faster when we work together. Thank you. <laughs>